and it do a better watercolour painting. Brush is ready. <laughs> Right you guys, just showing you that I have sold one of my Eden's, uh, it's called Eden's Loving Hooter Hatbird. No explanation needed why I called it the Hatbird. <laughs> but that's a way off to, where's it going to? Debbie in South Lanarkshire. So thank you again Debbie for your support of my art and buying my art. So here you are. <laughs> and that lovely, that looked great framed, very colourful for the wall. I thought I'd let you see it before it went. So these two this morning, which is great. This one's called A Trip to the Fair. You've probably seen it in one of my previous vlogs. And this one is Eden's Green Trout, which is a lovely colourful fish painting so they are off down south to England that's the certificates there next lovely as I said it's a painting day for me and it's such a beautiful day as well and I've got the net up that I just fitted as I show it says to you and I'm just about ready to do this watercolour but before I do that I'll show you the, what paints I use. Now, you've probably seen me ordering these and getting them in uh, through the post. But there's the paints I use. If you can see that, is that focusing? Is the, it's the Cotterman uh, watercolour paints. And it's Windsor Newton. I don't go buy these. Uh, they are kind, kind of pretty expensive, but I don't, I don't think they're really expensive, but a lot of people would think that they're expensive, because yeah, you do get a lot of cheaper ones, like the ones in the works. You get a pack of 10 in a box for about, I think it's 4 99 or 5 99 or something like that, for about, for about 10 tubes, whereas this one tube is 4 75 I used to get these at 3 99 uh, but I think they went up to about 4 I think you can still get some at 3 dollars but you've got to order quite a lot. Uh, I think it's about 6 tubes or something like that, which is not bad. But these are, I think I paid 4 75 each for these. I get them on all different colours as you know. I've got a variation of colours. I'll show you the the ones in my... I've got them all set in here guys. Orange, I've got rose, uh, red, uh, I've got blue, I've got white, blah blah blah. So I've got quite a few tubes of these, so you can see <laughs> that uh, you've got to gather them up. No, I mean, if you do uh, watercolours like me, sell them in for my self employment business, my art business. <laughs> <laughs> just stretching. <laughs> it's because I've been doing a bit of paint this morning. But uh, as I said to you, you, if you're doing it for business, you're going to gather them up. Uh, but what I do is, once I run out, I just order a new one, unless I go through a whole load of paints. 
and then I've got to order maybe six or seven at a time, which is pretty expensive as you've seen. So six times four seventy five. You know what I mean, so, uh, but in the long run, it's cheaper for me because I get the money back with the amount of paintings I sell. Uh, I've got the hat on today because it's uh, sunny. And it's just to keep the sun off my eyes. I'm doing it at the back window here, so. Uh, just to stop me from screwing my eyes up uh, and obstruction my view of painting. Stop the boiling. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to get on with this and I hope I enjoyed that wee bit of tip and I just thought you'd like to know what paints I use. Also guys, just since it's handy here, use the exact same Windsor Newton uh, alkyd paints for oils. I don't buy Windsor Newton now. Uh, I still use the watch paints, I've got, I've got boxes and boxes uh, watch uh, watercolour paints and oils that I, I bought years and years back as an investment because they were so cheap so I still use them as well but the alkyd paints are quick drying that's why I switched to Windsor and Newton and then I switched to the watercolour ones and Newton as well because I tried a tube one day I had run out of colour and I had to send away for it on eBay I found out that the Windsor Newtons just suited my style great, so that's the reason I switched to Windsor Newton. I'll probably over the next coming years uh, or months try different paints. I love trying different paints, as with any artist, but uh, at the moment I'm going to stick with Windsor Newton. So that's in oils and watercolours that I use Windsor Newton at the moment. Next! My <laughs> red light's flashing. I'm not going to charge this, look, I've been filming all morning. guys let's leave the painting for now and let's go and have a chat <laughs> you like this <laughs> into my little corner <laughs> studio anyway I'm gonna have to set these up here Let's have a look. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> but we need light. <laughs> These are going to uh, be spinning around just for a second to get you on the stand. It's on the screw of the tripod. <laughs> so be prepared to get dizzy. It's easy to see how I can do it. There you go. Does it? It's better. Let's sit next to my window where there's fresh air. Now, as I says to you through there, I'll have a wee bit of chat. It's all about my how I got into the art, my self employed art uh, business. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. I'm just going to uh, adjust this uh, uh, computer, need, uh, not the computer, the camera needs adjusted here. Oh, sorry about that guys, uh, car outside there. Uh, now, what was I saying there? Uh, yes, how I got into my art business, self-employed artist. Uh, Uh, 
how I got into my self-employed art business, uh, self-employed artist, was after the result of my accident and I developed PTSD. So through that illness, I had to quit my job as a cinema supervisor in my local cinema. It was a loved, great job. I loved that job to bits. Uh, but unfortunately, circumstances, uh, maybe for the better because, I mean, it was a really great job, but maybe for the better because now I'm, uh, I've got my own uh, self-employment uh, business. I'm my own uh, boss, as you would say. But uh, in order to do that, I have to have an income. So when I lost my job and I thought to myself, well, what am I going to do next? I think uh, I lived off my savings for a couple of years when I left the, the, the cinema and through that, I think it was about two years I developed into the idea of going self-employed as an artist because I had uh, picked up my art career uh, as soon as I left the last job. Uh, so, uh, sometimes it's hard to talk about my, my cinema job because I loved it that much. Uh, my family will tell you that uh, I, I couldn't wait to get in, into that, that work, but unfortunately circumstances came about. So, anyway, to get back on track to that story, uh, <laughs> to, to make it blunt, self-employment is not an easy task as a lot of you will know. So, there I was without a job, so I decided to go self-employed. Uh, just through different uh, things I had seen on online and advice from other people and what I already knew. So, I thought it was just going to be that simple that I was going to paint my paintings, draw my drawings, uh, do all paintings, watercolours, etc, etc. And it was going to be that easy that I'm going to just sell them and I'm going to make enough income to <laughs> to live on, to survive, which a lot of you artists out there will uh, reflect in, my, in me that, that this does not happen. <laughs> the worst job out to try and develop an income is to become an artist, a self-employed artist, and a self-employed artist business at that. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> or it's not that simple. <laughs> now, going back to the old artists, if you, I've, I've already explained uh, this scenario to you before. Van Gogh, Rembrandt, uh, all the old artists. At the time when they were doing their paintings, they did the exact same. They wanted to paint and sell their paintings and make a living off it. And back then it was even 10 times, maybe 100 times even harder. They didn't have any of the uh, things that we have nowadays with internet to sell online and whatever to spread our art worldwide. So they thought that they could make a living off that and they found it very, very hard. They were selling paintings to eat, to survive. So they were selling their paintings off really, really cheap, cheaply. They had to because they didn't know where their next meal was coming from. So whoever offered the uh, pittance to their paintings, they took it straight away because in my mind as well, you can always paint another one, know what I mean? So if they're gonna, if they want a nice meal or the, a nice meal for the next few days, they'd sell a painting for cheap, uh, cheaply. So, this is the scenario that I was looking at uh, just no long ago. Uh, when I went into my business, to start with, there was hardly any coming in. I was only selling maybe one painting every, maybe every three weeks or something like that, maybe even, even one, one a month. And I was selling at seven or nine, and I thought, God, because I was living off my savings, you know what I mean? I had savings to live off. I prepared for two years uh, to get started, and that's what I was living with my savings and through those couple of years I was thinking this is no use, this is this is not as easy as what I thought. 
Uh, I thought it was going to be at least selling one or two paintings a week, uh, but they didn't do that to seven. Now you must remember, I had a great job as, in the cinema, and then to go from there without a job, and just to go on the internet with my art, nobody knew me. Nobody knew who I was and what kind of art I was selling, so it takes a long time to develop uh, a name for yourself. And I've done I've, I've been on Touchwood, I've been on online now for oh, five, six years, maybe, maybe a bit longer. So I've got a wee bit of a name to myself now on eBay and on different uh, websites selling my art. So I've, I've gradually built it up, you have to gradually build up. But getting back to that scenario, the reason a lot of people of you will be wondering why on my eBay shop I sell different artifacts, uh, but if you look, it's all connected to handmade things and art, arty things, and people that's handmade just different crafts, or it's antiques that I love. I, my passion is uh, silver antiques, so silver plated, etc. So. Why I'm telling you this is about the, these other artifacts is because when I was sitting thinking this is no use, I can't survive on selling a couple of paintings a month, then I got the idea I need to subsidise my art. So in order to subsidise my art I thought well I'll need to sell something else and I was a, I was a lover of eBay. I, I, I bought loads of stuff off eBay. Me and my brother Raymond, we used to buy, we used to, uh, we used to divulge at eBay and just buy different things, videos, films, uh, just different things, uh, uh, movie collectibles, movie figures, and it's through that that I thought, well, I like going. I used to work in a charity shop. I used to work in cancer research. And I was in there for two years and I developed a lot of skills and I learned a lot in there. What was selling, what was not selling, and the prices, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I'd volunteered for cancer research. Uh, once I had left the cinema job, I had to have something to do, you know what I mean? So I went in there, but uh, that's where I developed a lot of my skills. I can sell stuff on eBay now. So. That's the reason that I went into, and this is a tip for all you up and coming artists, you will not survive unless you're really well known uh, in selling your paintings as an income. Hundreds of artists have found that out. So what I recommend is that you subsidise your art with something else that you're passionate about to sell on eBay, to subsidise your art while you're building that uh, that name for yourself up and bring in an income so that when your art's not selling your eBay items will be selling. It could be pens, it could be it could be actually art, artist materials. You could get a supply of artist materials and sell it on, online along with your art. Now, uh, when I uh, first went on eBay, my shop was full of my art, nothing else, just my art. So when I started selling the artifacts for eBay from, because I went to all the different charity shops, but all the stuff from the charity shops benefited out of it as well because they were getting my uh, money going into their shops. Uh, it's like a circle, isn't it? Uh, everybody benefits. So they were getting my income, they were getting income from me every single week, every single second day. They were getting money from me because I was buying stuff from them. Bring it, I was bringing it home and then I was putting it on eBay and uh, blah blah blah. So uh, <laughs> uh, I've lost my train of thought there, I'll let you get back. Thought of it, thought I was just going to tell you. So with me having my art now on eBay, my paintings, and I've also got these other artifacts to subsidise my income, when people see maybe a silver plated tea set, they come onto my shop and they also look at my other stuff and it takes them onto my paintings. And many a time I've seen the guys buying the tea set and then buying a couple of paintings, which they fancy, and then it all goes in one package and off, off to them. So this is another benefit for you selling other stuff on your uh, website or EB shop or Etsy shop or whatever. Uh, the other stuff draws in people and they see your art, so it's a lot, a lot of PR you're getting as well. 
Uh, and it's another way of selling your art. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Is, uh, so always have another income, another uh, another form of income that subsidises your art until you get on your feet. Uh, that's what I did. It's just by accident that happened. It's just because I could not survive paying the bills with this, the little paintings I was selling at the time. I hope that helps you. <laughs> that helped me. So guys, the tip of the day is subsidise your art. If you're selling your art and you're struggling, find an item or items that you are passionate about and would love to sell to other people and then you've got two forms of income. You've got your art, and when your art's not selling, you've got the items, uh, your other items, your other income. So that this might be, that paintings might be selling, this might not be. This might be selling, your paintings might not be. Or, both might be selling. <laughs> but there is times that both will not be selling, what I mean? So you've got to put quite a few items up for sale, so that you've got a good chance that somebody's going to uh, buy something off you each day or every second day or a few items per week. That's my tip for today. That's how I started. And my, uh, I'm getting well known every single day that I post things on, because I don't just post it on YouTube. I've got my own website, as you know, the Fish and Wildlife News. I'll put it up here, is it up here? Not up here. I'll put the, the link that you can go and have a look at my other website. Uh, well, my other channel, and that goes gets straight onto my my website. Uh, but it's all connected. You know what I mean? You've got to try and build it all up. Uh, takes years, like takes a good few years. But if you keep sticking at it, a lot of people give up. But if you keep sticking at it, then eventually people are going to recognise your name. And the more that you put out there, the more that people will see it. So that's another tip for you. Right guys, you know how difficult it is for me to get my words out uh, the way that I mean it. It's part to do with my PTSD and whatever my short term memory was. But anyway, uh, I hope that you get the gist of what I was saying about having another income to subsidise your art and I have a few of those tips uh, that go along with it. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. I'm going to stop the boiler now because once I start, I can't stop. But I'll need to go back to the painting because they're going to go up anyway. Uh, I think I'll put them up either later on today if I get some of them finished or tomorrow. I think it'll be tomorrow because I've got a lot of other stuff to do as well, as you've seen. So anyway, I'll say bye-bye for now. Keep on painting. <laughs> that was good. Eh? <laughs> Next.